Hey, what's going on? Climber Nation, Patrick here. This is footage from a subcontracting job that I was doing last week, and uh, I think there's some good stuff that we could look at and get some value out of. Um, so this is a technique that I'm going to show for pulling over a spar to effectively double your pull. Um, it's technically it's called a runner tackle. Uh, I didn't know that. I had to look that up. But uh, basically, instead of tying the rope directly to the spar to pull it over, you hang a block or a pulley. In this case, I hung a, a ring because I didn't have a sling that was long enough for the block. Um, but the ring is almost as good. So you, you hang uh, you know, a block or a pulley on the spar, and then you run the rope from an anchor point through the pulley and then back down to uh, to mechanical advantage to pull it over okay so it, it's effectively doubling the pull that you get on the spar so we're just going to look at this and i'll talk you guys through it okay okay i'm just going to pause it there so this is what we're dealing with um, it's about a 20 foot spar uh, this is sugar maple it's probably 34 35 inches across so it's big heavy stuff uh, I think it was about a week before this, one half of the tree had fallen off and it took out all of the hydro lines across the backside there and it squashed the fence uh, among other damage. So um, they requested that the hydro not get turned back on until we could come in and take the rest of the tree. Uh, so at this point, this is at the, at the end of a long day. Um, I could have continued just uh, like negative rigging this spar to get it down nice and low but I decided let's just flop it over so um, this is the direction that I want to take it out towards the road here towards this other trailer uh, you can see all these targets it's right beside a trailer there is a little walkway that's beside right beside the tree as well the walkway is connected to the deck which is connected to the trailer so I don't want to hit any of that I don't want to disturb that stuff and then you see on the far right here you can see a hydro pole and there's at least like seven hydrometers attached to that pole so obviously a very high dollar target so what I've decided to do here is I'm going to use this other tree up top here so I'm going to tie the rope to this tree the rope's going to run from there up to the ring that's on the top of the spar and then back down and we're going to tie the other end to the bucket truck okay let's take a look at that so i'm just going to swing back and come down okay so here's a view from the other side so now you can see uh, why that direction that i just showed you is really the only direction that we can go um, you can see the trailer you can see the, the whole side yard there is all fenced in. There's a shed, there's a little fire pit area, and then there's a hydro pole. Okay, so there's really only one precise way that we can fell this peg, okay? So here's another look from the front side. So this is the way that I want to take it, okay? You can see the trailer, uh, you can see the walkway, and the hydro pole. You can see all those meters and whatever else is attached to that pole. So uh, this is very like precise. It has to be exactly where I want it to go. And uh, yeah, if you look up top on the spar there, you can see the ring and you can see the rope running in to the one side and out to the other side, okay? What is this concoction? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so so what I realized after they gave me the rope to, uh, to run through the ring up top, uh, we realized that the rope wasn't actually long enough. So we we're going to have to tie another rope to it. So I was just at my truck grabbing my axe or something and I walked back and I see them tying these two ropes together using this goofy homemade knot. I call these Saturday knots when, when again, I'm subcontracting, right? So these are, are not guys that I normally work with. Uh, so they just made this up and I walked in on this. You do it. <laughs> I've done this one lots of times. This is uh, the same as when you make the eye to do a pull rope. I've seen you do that. I've never seen you do it to join two ropes together though. I have. Okay. I'll show you the Zeppelin bend. So if you do a six okay, yeah. tail on top, and then you do a nine tail on bottom, yeah. and you overlay them, and then you take the tails around the opposite side opposite and through the sides. middle this yeah that's, that's a zeppelin bend 
tighten that right up. It does matter. It gets tighter as you pull. Yes, but exactly. My thing is, getting that undone when you put a fucking big pull on it can be a bastard. You've used these before? Hey? You used the Zeppelin before? No. no? Because then you decide. I think you'll be surprised. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm good. You, you use both hands, you go like this. Yeah. Just give it the yep, twist. Yeah. Yep. Once you get movement on rope, I know as soon as you yeah. get movement, you're good. So I'm gonna I gotta move this this tie off higher because it's rubbing on the yeah, trailer there. Yeah, yeah. Well we got lots of rope now. Yeah. Okay, so that's the Zeppelin bend. That's my favorite way of attaching two ropes. Um, I definitely prefer it when both ropes are the same diameter. Um, so what I'm doing here is I, I had already tied the one end to the tree, uh, yeah. but it was obvious that it was too low. So anytime you're using mechanical advantage, anytime you're using like strong, strong pulls with rope, you need to make sure that the pathways are clear. The rope can't rub or be bent around anything. There, it? it might be. Because I moved Once it up. Once it's tight, it'll be an angle straight from here to there. Yeah, right. So you need a it'll straight It'll get it up path. above everything. Oh, yeah. Yep. So that's the basic setup from the, from the tree to the ring. No, no, you're fine because the angle that it's pulling is going to be halfway between the two. Yeah. It's going to so you'll be in between the two. Yeah, it'll be perfect right there. I hope that makes sense too. That's the other usage of this technique. You use it one to double your pull, but also you can use uh, it to uh, change on. the angle oh, to okay. redirect. Because when you have a rope coming from one side and a rope coming from the other side, the actual pull is directly halfway in between them, right? So uh, I do use this sometimes not just to increase the pull, but also to change the angle based on anchor points and what I have available for pulling. Grabbing my axe there. One last look at the setup before we get started. You'll see it here when I look up. There it is, okay? Rope from two different directions. One comes from the tree to the ring to the bucket truck. And then we're ready to go. So this is an 88, steel 88. I think it's got a 32 inch bar. <laughs> Uh, this is not my saw, I'm subcontracting again. So again, very, very little room for error in terms of the aim. So I'm going to use the, uh, the sights, but I'm going to do my, my angle cut first. I always prefer to my angle cut first when I'm filling. I know the old school technique is the opposite. You do your flat cut first. I find it much, much easier to meet an angle cut with a flat cut as opposed to meeting a flat cut with an angle cut. And I think I think most, most people who teach felling nowadays, I think they teach it this way with angle cut first. So you can see like I said, it's a 32 inch bar. It's still not long enough to cut through the whole thing. I have to go and finish on the far side. Okay. So anytime you're cutting a face, just cut it so that it looks pretty good and then stop cutting, right? Take your ax. Pop a wedge in there and count it. Take your ax and actually hit, hit that wedge out of there instead of just trying to cut it out. All right. Same old saw. <laughs> Same old saw. <laughs> that saw idles really low. It can be really annoying when you flip it on the side. So the face is pretty good. I'm just gonna clean it up here. Um, you'll notice I'm showing a, a lot more cutting in this video than I normally show. Uh, cutting, especially on a large diameter like this, takes quite a while. And it can be really boring to watch, but I'm trying to I'm trying to skip through it and show you guys the important stuff. Okay, so here's a really super important technique for me. Anytime I'm in a situation where I need to fell something, in it, and it has to be precisely aimed, after I cut my face, I'm always going to just set the saw down, and I'm going to walk out along the path, and I'm going to see what it looks like. Uh, when it's less crucial, I might trust someone else to eye it up for me and tell me what they think, but when it's really crucial, I will physically walk out and take a look at it. It's very important that I'm convinced it that it's aimed right. It looks weird because it's not round. It's not big, yeah. When it's not round, you, it, 
it just makes the aim yeah. look weird. It looks like it's going to we, it looks like it's going it does. maybe that way. I know. I agree. We got a whole bunch cut out here, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so anytime a stem is not perfectly round, it can make the face look like it's pointed in a different direction. So one thing I'll do, you saw me do it there with my hand, is I'll put my hand in perpendicular to the face, and I'll just try and visualize a line straight out from that. Yeah. And that can help me see if, if it's aimed the way that it should be. So I'm at this point, I'm happy with it. I'm, uh, I'm convinced that I aimed it good enough. Um, I'm gonna do some side cuts. I'm definitely more aggressive on these side cuts on this tree than I normally would be. It's just because there's really no room for error. I don't want it to drift to either side. Um, again, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna do a whole video just on side cuts. But uh, basically side cuts help keep the bark from tearing down on the, on the outside edge, on the cambium, which can cause a tree or a top to go to drift sideways. And I actually have some footage of that that we'll show in another video. Okay, so I'm just going to start my back cut. Now, for me, anytime I'm doing a back cut on a large diameter tree with a big bar, I'm just going to start it like that, and I'm just going to get down and look at it. I want to see visually that it's not crooked, like the bar is, is going to match up to the, to the apex of the notch on both sides. So you can see I made a slight adjustment and started over. But I'm going to do the same thing now on my new back cut. I'm just going to stop it, and I'm going to take a look, so it looks good on this side. I'm going to look from the other side, make sure it looks good there. Okay, hard to see there on the camera, but so I'm happy with that, so now I'm into my back cut. Again, I'm speeding this up because it's this sugar maple. This chain is pretty good, it's not perfect. Sugar maple is super hardwood. It takes a long time to cut through. Okay. So this is something that I actually prefer on large diameter trees. Instead of doing your whole back cut from the one side and trying to square it up, uh, it can be very, it's very difficult to visualize the far side of the bar. So what I'll actually prefer to do is to cut from both sides using like half the bar. So I'll do half the back cut on the one side and half the back cut on the other side. So that's what I'm doing here. This is just some. This is just what I prefer for large diameter stems. Okay, so I'm going to get my my half back cut on this side, and then I'm going to go back across and finish from the other side. It just helps me to visualize where the bar is along the length of the hinge that I'm leaving. I find it easier than trying to do it all from the one side on a large diameter stem, right? So we'll pop a wedge in there. Okay, and then I'll come back on this side and finish this side of it. Okay. I'm trying to leave like maybe a one and a half inch hinge or so. We're going to pop a couple couple wedges in. I'm going to take one more look at it. See what I think. From this side looks good. Okay. I'm just going to get back out of the way. Off to the side. Give him the signal on the truck there. And he can just start slowly backing up. He's going really slow. So as me and uh, Jamie are standing here watching this very slowly move, it looks to both of us like it's going a little bit too far to the right towards that hydro pole. So I'm just giving him the, the signal to stop here. Okay, so he's just gonna stop there. You think? Um, take another look at it. It kind of looks like it's drifting a bit, okay. a bit too much to the right. A little more. Yep. Yep. So I'm just gonna go in with the saw one last time. I'm gonna nip a little bit of the holding wood on the right-hand side, and so to leave a little bit extra on the left side just to try and compensate, hopefully. Again, definitely not cutting through the hinge wood, just making it a little bit thinner on the right-hand side. 
you can see I'm, I'm only using like half the bar again. I'm only cutting the one side of the hand foot, right? Okay, nice and slow. It starts to move. And get out of there. Boom. Wow. That was awesome. So there's my hinge. You can see it's a little bit thicker on the left side, a little bit thinner on the right side, but it is a straight hinge all the way across. That's the most important part of, of felling, right? Is to not cut through your hinge wood. Nope. The axe is mine. Okay, so this is the ring that was up top. It's got the daisy chain hitch on it. Just pop that off. There you go. And that was a serious pull with a bucket truck, and it was doubled. And that just untied like nothing. And then the last thing to untie is that Zeppelin bend that I showed the boys there. So yeah, I just crack it. Yeah, I both just did hands. that. I did that already. She's loose already. It takes nothing. Yep. That's good. That's I like that. Yep. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. Six on top of the nine. The sixty nine. The Zeppelin the bend. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, there it is. I hope that makes sense, and uh, I hope you guys can get some value out of that. Um, again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and for, for providing feedback for these kind of videos, where I'm talking over top of action and just explaining how it's going. Uh, so, listen. While I have you here, why don't we just go ahead and watch another one? Uh, we could watch this one or uh, this one. This one. Hmm? Let's pick one. Let's just do it. Thanks, guys.